A lot of different ways of producing white light. Bicolor was one of the first ways, well, actually one of the first ways was that art, straight RGB. Mix RGB together, you end up with white. It's not anything you can photograph with because there's no volume of white spectrum uh, that's going to reflect. It's basically three bands, red, green, blue. So that never, never worked. But the, the bicolors, they work to a certain degree, but as you blended them, you got into trouble. If you just stayed in the 32 range and the daylight range, didn't try to blend them, you're most probably going to be fine. RGBW, having a single white, it works to a certain degree. Uh, you've got a full spectrum white, and then let's say if it's in the tungsten mode and you want to take it into the daylight, the challenge there is you're, you're pushing in a band of blue. So mathematically, it looks great that you're going into the high Kelvin, but I'll show you what happens spectrally. You just don't have the volume of spectrum to reflect back those essential tones that you're looking for. RGB, WW, or CW, cool white, warm white, we're thinking of redefining that because, there's, again, there's no standards for any of the stuff we're talking about. Uh, we're thinking of calling it RGB TD. There's a lot of confusion with the Ws. Is sometimes they use WW and they mean they've got two whites, sometimes they mean they just have a warm white. It's very confusing. So we said, said we're going to go TD, tungsten daylight. <laughs> Leave it at that. There's a, another system where you just slam in a whole bunch of different wavelengths and hope that you're going to fill up that spectrum. And the more spectrum, the more color points you have in there, by golly, you're going to get a spectrum out of it. Yeah. So it, it makes theoretical sense, yet when you look at the response curves of different cameras, you're going to have a different outcome on every different camera, even taking this approach. So bottom line, white light is not all the same. And as cinematographers, choosing your instrument you need to be aware and conscious of what you're working with. You need to understand it. And these are the questions you have to ask the manufacturers. What exactly are you producing here? What kind of white light is this? And then you need to do your camera tests. So here's an illustration of two whites versus a single white at 3200. The red line, orange line, is 3200, uh, single white. And you can see how the two whites have a much fuller spectrum. It reaches further out. There's a lot more color information that's coming back to the camera. One of the areas of concern is those spikes on the end. Every LED has it. It's the 450 emitter line. By playing with the phosphors and doing them correctly, what you try to do is you try to lift that bottom valley. The higher you can get it, the higher your color reproduction is going to be. So this is where we have the benefit on the green line of having two full spectrum whites and just using that RGB to lift it up and follow the plankton, we're maintaining this volume of spectrum. The RGBW is somewhat compromised. Um, and you can just, those are the, I mean, mathematically, you can, you can actually track these differences. What does that actually mean when we start looking at them? Uh, more analytical. XY coordinates match, which is great. If we look at what the cameras see, so the two whites are showing at a high color rendering. Even the RGBWs, they're coming out in very decent colors, at least on the Amira. If you compare the Amira to a Mysterium, you see that the value already has dropped to a 93. So again, and these are two light sources, basically identical light sources on two different cameras, and already you see how they read that differently. And this is where it gets interesting when you see it, start looking at the gel. So there was no correction necessary on the two whites, the single white. In that particular instance, you may want to add an eighth, but almost a quarter on the Mysterium. So again, this is just illustrating how, different, how the cameras see the same source differently. And there's not really a meter that will tell you, that'll give you that data unless you do a camera test to try to figure out, are these things going to work for me when I'm working on this set? How is this, how is this going to play out? Same thing with the, uh, the daylight. Again, we see a difference in spectral distribution between two whites 
and a single white. And whenever we try to go for any spectrum, the smoother, the smoother we can get it, the broader we can get it. That's sort of the, the goal. And if we take that into an analytic, we can see XY coordinates a little off, which is not a big deal. Uh, the photographic rendering indexes between the Amira and the Mysterium are very close. And when we look at the correction, they about, both approximately had the same correction between uh, the Mysterium and the Amira. So again, so what applied in the, in the tungsten, where you had a bigger separation, now in the daylight, it's a much closer relationship. But there's no real way of defining that when you're on the set, unless you have the response curves of the, the cameras. And so this is, this is very frustrating. Now, there's another approach where you say, you know what, I'm not going to use any white at all. I'm just going to put in as many wavelengths as possible. So here's an example of a 3200 RGB, sapphire blue, cyan, lime green, uh, and amber. And again, when you look at their overall distribution, it seems like it fills in a lot of the, the gaps. But once you see it spread out and compared, you see how different the volume of, of spectrum is. And if we take that into our program, Again, under the uh, photographic rendering index, so 96 and 94, they're not that far apart. If we go up to the, to the top, well, on the Amira, suddenly we see a huge correction well over, uh, well over a quarter. Uh, but on the Mysterium, it's fine. No correction necessary, it actually works great. So this, keep that number in mind, because if we, this is tungsten, and if we go to daylight, Again, spectrum, we go to the analysis. And now suddenly we see how on both counts, they've jumped to both a, a quarter and an eighth correction necessary. So, and the other one that was 0 0.07 up in the corner is now a 3.3, so it's really jumped. So, you know, just because you're good in the tungsten and you think, I'm, I'm fine, I'm just gonna dial into daylight. Whoa, in for a surprise. So these are the kinds of things that even surprised us as we're doing this. And the more we're thinking about it, going, oh, damn, well, what are you, what are you trying to target when you're making this light? We're, we're dealing with a discontinuous spectrum. How do you put it out there and can honestly say to a cinematographer, I think you're going to be all right. It's going to be fine. It's not. And I can't even tell you where or what. So we, we, we finally decided we're going to have to put in camera profiles, at least for some of the major cinema cameras, and we're going to be adding to it, that hopefully will bridge this and give you corrective spectrum out of the instrument so that we can give you a neutral white point. So the idea is that the lighting instrument becomes what Kodak, where Kodak embedded their color science in the emulsion. We're going to try and embed the color science into the fixture once you've selected your camera. And then give you all the other controls that you can mess it up any way you want. But at least we'll give you a neutral starting point. Okay. So we're not going to lock you in. You know, and if you see something that, you know, you, you purposely want to do something, knock yourself out. You can add green magenta. You can go anywhere you want with it. It's all in the software. It's all in, all the choices are there. Looking at 6500, uh, oh, here, yeah, this one was, was kind of fun. So this is your typical day on the set. You've got three different manufacturers, three different ways of seeing light, white light. This is all 6500. And you see how the spectral distribution is all over the map. And this is what you're dealing with when you're on the set. So, again, these, these rendering numbers are all, they're fine. It's, it's not, but it gives you, again, an idea that there, there's, there are some differences. And then when you go up to uh, the critical ones, you know, what is it all seeing? Well, over here, a single camera seeing these three different light sources will see one light source as a quarter and an eighth magenta correction necessary. And if that happens to be on a blonde individual walking through the set and suddenly there's a, a backlight on them which is unmotivated and suddenly it goes green and the rest of, rest of the set has no motivation for green, enjoy. And some of these things you don't necessarily see when you're in your DI on the set, it's not until it's all fully rendered out and now you're sitting in your timing suite and this is when you start banging your head on the, on the, on the console going, I never saw this, it, but it's, you know, it's there. <laughs>